The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it, and he was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. Go back to where this whole exchange began. Jesus says, whoever keeps my word will never see death. Why is it, do you suppose, that the people with whom Jesus is speaking today find this so utterly ridiculous? It's so preposterous. Now they are certain that he is possessed. He's either out of his mind or he's been possessed by, by uh, the devil to actually uh, promote himself now as some pseudo-messiah. Why are they so certain of that? Why do they not receive it as an invitation? Amen, amen, I say to you, solemnly, I'm saying to you, if you keep my words, then you will have life forever. You will never see death. Why do they not receive it as an invitation? Why do they receive it only as sure and certain proof that he is possessed? Because for them, the most certain thing in the world is death. It's even more sure and certain than life, the thing that they experience every single day. The more powerful reality, the kind of fundamental foundational reality of their entire world is death. Does that seem a little extreme to us? Does that seem a little ridiculous? Does it seem hard to um, grasp or to relate to? I don't know. Think back to that very famous expression that uh, Ben Franklin made so prominent in our own country, our own culture. It was a little quip, but there's some truth behind it. He said, there's nothing so certain in this world than death and taxes. Nothing else is as certain in this world except these two things, death and taxes. That's your foundational reality. And so you start from that. I may not know a lot of things in the world, but I do know that every single one is, every person, every living thing is going to die. Therefore, death is my foundational reality. When you start from that point of view, the possibility of life that goes on and on and on at a higher pitch of existence, eternal life, the life of the Father, Son, and Spirit, it becomes inconceivable. It's less believable. It's less plausible than death. If you're still not convinced that this is in fact the framework in which we too operate, that death is more plausible to us even than life, I invite you just to open up Netflix and scroll through the options available on Netflix. Actually, I invite you not to do that. <laughs> because what you see one after another is this morbid uh, fascination we have, this morbid certainty we have about death and finitude. Just about every single thing available in our world of culture and entertainment is, um, is laced, is founded upon um, uh, death, the certainty of death. How does that play out in my life? Elsewhere in the scriptures, we learn that um, it's because of fear of death that, um, that we've lived our whole life uh, with this great sense of being enslaved. And so what Jesus does above all is to come to free us from this foundational certainty of death. 
Jesus says in really stark terms a little bit later on that um, if he said that he didn't know the Father, he would be like these people with whom he's exchanging words, a liar. It sounds really kind of um, strong and maybe even, um, maybe even a little too much, maybe. Why are they liars? It's because they're living in a reality that is founded upon a lie. Because the basic reality of all that exists is not death. If the basic reality of everything that existed was death, nothing would exist. The foundational reality is life. And Abraham actually saw that. Because the reaction that one has when one realizes that the foundational reality is life and not death is joy. Abraham rejoiced when he saw Christ coming all these centuries down the road, the definitive savior. Abraham's response is joy because he sees that the final word and the first word is life, not death. How does that play out in my life? This great battle between life and death. The great somber desolation that we can so easily slip into by focusing so intently on limit and finitude and things coming to an end and finally death to the point where we assume that death is, in fact, the final word. How does it play out in my life? That's the question for us today. Jesus is so sure that, uh, that we start from the place of death that he understands that he has to go into death itself to show us life. Okay, your foundational reality is death. Well, guess what? I'm going to enter into death and precisely there is where I'm going to show you life. Today we're surrounded in this pandemic by images of death, by perhaps fear of death, by fear for others, the medical workers, et cetera, who are putting themselves in a position of great potential harm. Death is everywhere present in a time of plague, but Jesus Christ enters into death so that there he might show us that in fact the foundational reality is not death. The foundational reality is love. And there is nothing more living in this world than love, because love is what creates the world from its very foundations. Let's pray for that grace today. Let's pray that what we might know in our heart of hearts, at the deepest depth of our being, might be life, might be the living love of God, and might not be this constantly oppressive force of death, that always wants to criticize and accuse and say impossible. Amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will not see death. Amen.